everyone, and welcome back to my podcast. Um, today is January 12th. I had to look. Um, I hope everyone had a good Christmas and New Year's. Uh, we did. So um, in this podcast, I'm going to be sharing just a few things that I got for Christmas since this is the first podcast after the holidays. But I'm going to start off with the one new thing that I got um, and it's just by happenstance that I got it because uh, my husband ordered on eBay a wallet and he thought that it was going to be like one of those long men's wallets because that's what they had it labeled as and it's not. It's a woman's clutch. So he was really kind of irritated about that because, you know, he paid, I think he said $12 for it and we've waited all this time for it to come in and it's clearly not what it was labeled as being so he gave it to me and this is what it looks like it's just a little clutch it's got zippers on it so it has a zipper out here with a fairly large pocket and as you can see I'm using it for my crochet hooks and then it opens up um, like this you know you clearly have the pockets and everything for um, credit cards and whatnot, but I decided to go ahead and use it for um, my crochet hooks and stitch markers and stuff like that because there's another pocket here which I put my smaller crochet hooks in and then I put, um, I like split them in half because I have an entire set of pretty much all the sizes you can think of except for the really large ones. So I split it um, down the middle and I put the smaller ones inside and the larger ones outside. So I have my little uh, stitch counter. Um, these ones are for knitting, but my husband bought me these a while back. And I have two sizes, so I put those in there. And um, I hung some stitch markers here and my paper clips because you guys know I love to use paper clips for um, stitch markers. but. Uh, I did get all of my, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, I frogged a project and um, got all my little book stitch markers back. So they're in this little, it's like a net pocket, but it has it's a zipper pocket so it closes. So I have all my little book stitch markers in there. And I have some pencils and pens up here, and that's pretty much mostly what I've done so far because I just started doing this yesterday. I'm not sure when I'm going to use all these little pockets for yet, but I'm sure I'll find a use for them. And then I'm just sticking my highlighter right there and it just um, zips up all nice and neat. And everything's enclosed so I don't have to worry about losing anything. And this is a little uh, more secure than the little button box that I was using. Um, I got one of those little pencil boxes from the Dollar Tree, I think it's a couple years ago now, and it, um, it's like a little square, or a rectangle, and it has uh, like a little drawer that pulls out and it has a little button on top, but that's, you know, it's not the most secure thing, so this is much nicer, even though it's just by happenstance that I got it. But that is my only new item, I thought I would just share it with you, and that is an idea, um, you know, for a crochet hook holder, if you are looking for one, definitely look into, you know, like the little hand clutches, um, like in the purse section. I know Walmart carries them, and of course you can find them online and whatnot, but it would have to be ones that have zippers. So, um, so like I said, that's my only new item. So I'm going to move on into what I got for Christmas. I only brought a few things out. I got you know, several more things, but um, they're all in my bedroom and my husband's sleeping because he's working nights this week, so um, I just grabbed what was already out here um, that I remembered to bring out, but uh, one of my main gifts was, and this is what I asked for, was a laminator. So it looks like this, and um, I've already used it. It's really nice. It says it's a 13 inch compact thermal A3 laminator. Um, it has a very large slot to it and it works really well. Um, 
I laminated some photos on it and it worked really well for that so um, I'm really happy to have a, this because I've never had one before and I find that especially with my uh, planner layouts and stuff like that I need a laminator more often than I used to so um, that's nice to have and then um, he got me the Color Workshop Rose Eyes, and this is just a little eyeshadow palette. <clears throat> this is just one of those little stocking stuffer things that he grabbed for me. Um, it is a nice palette. Um, I love the okay. packaging. And for my husband, I also got um, some little figurines, and I got some more incense because I love incense. And he also got me this, I wish I would have brought it out, it's really pretty. Um, it's like this little figurine, and it has um, three of the pharaoh's heads on it, and it makes this little stand, and it has a glass, um, a glass ball on top. It's not a crystal ball, but it's supposed to look like one, but it's really pretty. Um, I probably won't be able to get in there to take a picture of it, but that is another one, and he got me this really pretty, um, it's like a garden plate, you know, something that you decorate your garden with, but um, I want to hang it on my wall in our bedroom, and it's a sun and a moon, and they're all glittery and really pretty, and he also bought me some more makeup and, you know, goodies and stuff like that, but those are, you know... A lot of the main presents. So from my oldest daughter, which we celebrated Christmas with her early, um, she got me the best present. Um, as everybody knows, I am a huge Harry Potter fan. In my bedroom, I have a huge area just piled full of Harry Potter stuff. So, and she knows this. So she got me. Um, something I have been wanting and my husband tried to get but couldn't afford and she managed to get it for a really decent price so this is what it came in um, it says storybook cosmetics and I first seen these on Pinterest and of course these are probably the Chinese knockoffs but they are still gorgeous so they are um, the Harry Potter wand uh, makeup brushes and I they're still in the packaging I to be honest I'm afraid to use them I don't want to mess them up so um, they are actually really heavy they're made out of metal um, and then they have you know nice makeup brush end on it so here's Voldemort's And I really, really like these. So I think I'll just leave the... And here is Dumbledore's. The Elder Wand. And they're, like I said, they're really heavy. So, and you know, the, the brush end on them is really nice too. So here's Harry's, and I use a brush like this to define um, the outer V and my crease, so that'll be really nice because this is way smaller than the one I have. And here is Hermione's, which is an angled brush, and then I think this is supposed to be Ron's. Um, I don't recognize it, so I'm sure that it is because I have had a hard time finding Ron's wand. So, and it's a larger angled brush. But I assume since, you know, the other two are there, this has got to be his. Um, I have six wands from the movie. Um, I have Dumbledore's, 
Harry's, Hermione's, Snape's, Sirius's, and Jenny's. And Ron's is the only one that I cannot find. So, um, this is nice. I, I'm loving them. I'm, like I said, I'm not sure whether I'm going to just keep them in my collection or use them. Um, I really have not made up my mind yet. I don't want to ruin them. I do know that because, um, they truly are a one-in-a-lifetime thing, so that's what they look like. I am so pleased with them. And I never in my life expected that, you know, I would get them because, like I said, my husband, when I first noticed them, he tried to get them, and um, they were just too expensive for such a small set. But, um, like I said, she managed to find them, and I definitely will treasure them. So, along to go to go along with that, she bought me um, these little dishcloth sets or washcloth sets that are in the colors of each house. So I was really pleased um, with everything that I got for Christmas. Um, my youngest daughter, she, um, her school does like they're called tiger tickets. But they're like these little things that you get. They're money, basically, that you get for doing a good job in school and doing, you know, good things for other people and all this. But so they can earn these tickets and then they can buy stuff um, from the little store that they have. And she, you know, she's an excellent girl, so she's got loads of them. So um, she went to buy Christmas presents for everybody. And my husband suggested that since she had... She had like a hundred of them at that point. And um, since she had so many of them, she should just, you know, do it that way. That way she doesn't spend her actual, you know, allowance money. And that's what she did. She went and got everybody's Christmas presents that way. And it's, you know, nice because she earned that money and was able to buy all of her Christmas presents. So um, she got me this really cute cup. And unfortunately, it's dirty right now, so I can't bring it over. But it's a uh, water bottle, and it's really cute. And then my middle daughter made um, my husband and I a wreath, and it's um, supposed to be one that um, I had looked up on Pinterest and I really liked and I have not got around to making yet. So she made a smaller version of it, and what it is, it's, um, it's a wreath. It has, like red, white, and blue on one side, and then camel on the other side, and it says um, my husband's rank and name and everything, and then it has a little bow with uh, jewels on it on the other side. So we are hanging that on our bedroom door. So that is um, everything that I got for Christmas. So I just thought I would share it. Um, I know it's a little bit after Christmas, but this is the per first podcast that I've had since Christmas. <coughs> since Christmas. Sorry, my voice is, seems to be going today. So, um, I do have finished projects. Um, I have several. I'm going to start off with the first thing that I finished. And I found, or I seen this on, um, No Catchy Name. I'm, I believe her name is Ella. Um, I have recently found her, and I really do like her podcasts. So if you are interested in crochet, crochet podcasts, obviously you must be if you're watching mine, um, definitely go check hers out. But um, she does these really cute um, banners and stuff all the time, and animals and all kinds of stuff. So um, she was making these little hearts. They're not so little, but... Um, for Valentine's Day, and she made hers into a banner. But I um, just added a loop to mine because we have a vintage record player um, that sits over there below our TV, and that's we have little hooks on it, and that's where we hang our stockings at Christmas, and that's where I hang all of my um, decor items for each holiday. So I made three. <coughs> three of these hearts and I think they're so, really like gorgeous. I said I brought over or I made three of these hearts and um, I used um, 
um, I used this yarn. It's Barnett Giggles, and it's in the colorway Giggling Girl. And I won a couple skeins of this in a giveaway from Random Randy's uh, podcast. So um, I had two skeins, so I decided to work up my hearts in this because I was going to do pink, just all pink hearts with white, um, the white ruffle, but I didn't have any pink on hand, even though I found a skein since then. But um, I figured this is kind of, you know, a little bit of everything. My husband's favorite color is purple and mine is pink. So I decided to go with this. And then this is just Red Heart Super Saver in white. But I think they're really cute. So I did make um, three of them and I am so irritated. The dog splattered something on my third heart. So I'm going to have to clean that before I hang it up. Um, but what I think I'm going to do with these, I think I'm going to starch them because they're kind of floppy and they have to hang up. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to have to sew a pipe cleaner on the back because I want them to hang just like this. And they have to hang from the little hanger. So um, I'm still calling them finished even though I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to stiffen them up. But I do have some spray starch in there. I'm going to try that. I've never starched a crochet anything before, so hopefully it won't ruin them. My husband doesn't think that it will, so um, we'll just have to wait and see. But I really like how they turned out, and they remind me of the, you know, the old-time Valentines that you used to make, like when you were a kid. Well, at least if you're as old as I am, you used to make them as a kid. Uh, with the little ruffles on the outside. So, um, I'm very pleased with those. So that is my first finished object. My second one is this panda. And I think it turned out really cute. Uh, oh, and before I move on, that is the Valentine. Valentine's Day hearts crochet pattern and I found it on Ravelry and it's by Regina Riox. I am horrible at pronouncing names but um, you can find it on Ravelry and um, the panda I also found on Ravelry and it just says panda bear free pat free pattern and this is what it looks like um, when I printed it it didn't give me any measurements anyway so I went ahead and did it in worsted weight yarn with a five millimeter crochet hook and this is how big it turned out which is fine um, I'm not the only thing I don't like is it's one of those ones the head is much bigger than the body which is fine it gives it a cute aspect but um, I don't know I think I just I'm one of those proportion people so I really want everything to kind of be proportioned to everything but this is a gift for my oldest daughter um, her birthday is coming up and we're going to actually celebrate it on Tuesday but she loves pandas and um, what I thought I would do is I bought her some earrings and, some, and a necklace and I thought that I would put them in the little panda's ears because uh, she has all of her, well, almost all of her earlobe pierced. She has um, her cartilage pierced and then all of her ear pierced up here. So um, I thought she would find that cute. But um, like I said, her favorite animal is pandas. So this is what it turned out like. Um, I did deviate from the pattern for the body because it was just going to be way too small for this big head. So I tried to proportion it um, a little bit better and I made it fatter because it would have been almost as skinny as the two legs put together. And that, so I. I increased as I went up the body just to make it a little bit fatter. 
and then I um, did the, the arms a little bit bigger. But I think they're really cute. I'm not really great at animals. But I figure the more I do, the better I'll get. Because I've, I've really only done a few animals throughout my entire time of crochet. Um, and Megurumi is really not my thing. But I am, you know, getting into it more. Um, my youngest daughter really appreciates it more than anybody else. So um, the next items for her. But um, I did use safety eyes. And I um, stitched on the nose and the mouth. So, um, like I said, I'm really pleased with it, and hopefully she'll like it. The next one, um, I pretty much only did the, the head on this pattern. So, um, this is what it looks like, and I'm using the same, oh, I didn't even say, for the panda, I just use what Red Heart Super Saver in black. And this is the next one. It's a little kitty cat. Um, I use the same yarn as the hearts, so the Burnett Giggles in Giggling Girl. And um, my daughter loves it. I am not so pleased with it, but um, like I said, the pattern. Which I didn't even, somehow didn't even get the name of the pattern, but I got it off Riverly, and it's, um, it looks like this. And it's just kitties. Um, I'm sh pretty sure you could type in crochet cats, and it would probably pop up. But I used worsted weight yarn. It called for DK cotton. And I used acrylic, and it was supposed to be much smaller. Since I used worsted weight yarn, I went ahead and used a five millimeter crochet hook, and I wanted so I wanted it to be a little bit bigger anyway. Um, I figure if you're going to make a stuffed animal, it needs to be at least large enough to play with, not these little micro things. But um, for some reason, I didn't get the name on when I printed it. But like I said, I used. Um, the same yarn that I use for the hearts, and then this is Red Heart Petal Pink, and then Red Heart White. And like I said, I only use the pattern for the head. The head turned out super large, and I followed the directions and everything and placed the eyes where they were supposed to be, and once I got it put together, the face is just too far down. Um, I should have just measured it myself, but I followed the directions and um, it didn't come out quite where I wanted it. And I didn't really even notice it until I went to attach the head. But um, the rest of it I just did on my own. Um, I started out working the body, starting from the feet, um, just starting from the feet, just like uh, the pattern said, I realized it was going to be way too small. So I just started working it up on my own, and then I got so far up and decided that I wanted to attach the skirt, because um, I asked my daughter, and she said, yeah, she would like to have a skirt. So, so like I said, I um, just started increasing uh, the pattern from where it started and I made it a little bit bigger until I knew it was the size that I wanted to be so I copied it for the other leg and then I joined the legs together so um, the legs and the body itself were all one piece and I just increased um, just a little bit for the tummy I think I didn't write any of this down but um, then I just kept working up until I thought it was the the height that it needed to be to match the head, and then I made the arms, and then um, I did, I made the ears um, the same off the pattern, so basically the entire head and the ears are from the pattern, 
and everything else is just off the top of my head. So um, I wish I would have moved the skirt up a little bit more and I attached the arms um, a little too low because I attached the arms before I put the head on and um, I just thought that I would need a little more space for the head but apparently I didn't so um, that's what it turned out like and of course you know once I got done with it um, she said it needed a shirt so I made her this little halter, to halter top um, just kind of measured and decreased as I went up but um, she really likes it and she wanted a bow for the ear so like I said she um, she wanted a top for it so that was the best I could come up with at the time because the arms are so a lot further down than what they're supposed to be and I had already got it all put together before I realized that they were a little too far down but she doesn't care and then she wanted a little bow for the ear so I just um, crochet I chained um, I don't know probably about this long and then I did I think it was two rows of single crochet and then I folded it over and seamed it together and then just wrapped uh, the yarn around it kind of like the same way that I did the bow headband um, which is one of my tutorials but um, that is my last finished object and she will be so happy to be able to have it today I think she's really cute even though she's a little lopsided and wonky <laughs> so that is um, like I said my last finished project um, I currently have no whip started. Um, I do have plans for a new project, but I have not had the chance to start it yet. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, I frogged a project uh, this week, which was the cabled jacket that I had been working on. I swear it's been like two years. And I... I just couldn't finish it. Uh, I tried to sit down and finish it this week and I had just reached the point where I didn't want to finish it so I just ripped it all out and that was out of the <clears throat> Red Heart Super Saver in what is it? Something teal. Real teal. So I have I think probably the equivalent of five skeins here. I think that's what I started out with on that other sweater. So I've caked them all up and um, the color is really pretty. I just didn't like the pattern. The pattern um, I had trouble with from the beginning and I kind of pushed through it and then um, I just lost interest and I put it on the back burner and then I kept pulling it out every so often and trying to work on it and I did finish both the front and the back panel on that and got probably about that much into each sleeve and I just didn't like the sweater it was going to be too big and I just wanted to be done with it so I decided just to frog it and what I'm going to start with is the entwined chic cable sweater and I found this on Red Heart Red Heart's website and that's what it looks like so it is pretty much a basic sweater um, it has a little bit of cabling right here in the front and it has a cowl neck on it and um, I really like the sleeves uh, the cuff on the sleeves starts probably about here and then this whole section is just um, the ribbing which I really like it is a like high low I mean not like crop top high but um, it is higher in the front and longer in the back which I think will be really nice because um, I think it'll be really nice to wear with leggings I am I'm not the body type to be wearing leggings without a long shirt so I think it'll be really nice and I can't wait to start it and since it's just um, pretty much 
double crochet I think it's pretty much double crochet except for this cabling section right in the front. But unless I find a, another sweater that I like better than this between now and the time that I start it, that's probably going to be my next project that I start on. And um, it actually is kind of strange because it calls for four different crochet hooks. Um, It's like you have a different crochet hook, a size of crochet hook for um, each section. So like the ribbing on the body is a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook and um, a 5 millimeter for the body and the sleeves and then a 4 millimeter for the ribbing on the cuff. And then a six millimeter, uh, yeah, it says five and six millimeter for the cowl. So that might be a little interesting. It'll be the first pattern I've ever done that called for so many crochet hooks. Um, so that is all I have for you this week. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.